It is Monday, June 17th at 4.03 p.m. And the Board of Commissioners of Harvard Electric Department is meeting. Uh, Commissioner Demers, Commissioner Kalisher Koch, uh, Commissioner Prigo, Commissioner Kedekin are present. And so we have a quorum. And uh, Interim General Manager Scott Johnstone is here, as is Beth Essery. And we have Brian and Stu Arnold, correct? I remember. I'm terrible on names. I've put on faces I know we've met before. Um, also here. So, uh, are there any modifications to the agenda? Okay. Um, is there a motion on the minutes from the May 20th? I move to approve the May 20th minutes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? No opposition, so the minutes are approved. And we have time for public comment. We have any specifically on the agenda, Stu, so but there isn't any other public here. So I think the next item on the agenda is Policy and Life Protection Committee. So the floor is um Trying to think where you could sit. Uh, no, you can't turn the camera. Up. Why don't you go right next to the <laughs> right in between now and my room? Okay. Next, way. you scooch over or let me scooch over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The need for a replacement for the manager, as we as the Greensboro Association, and particularly my role is to make protection and um, regular contact with my stuff that I know like many things. So I see that um, you're the interim replacement, and uh, and so we just be interested in um, who we best talk to. Um, and Robin thought maybe we just I can come continue to come to the commissioners, but it is um, if you, however you want me to operate on a, a situational base basis. Who's my best? Company? And Lynn, what I had suggested, what Stu would give us is just a very short outline of what they're working on, what they're worried about, that touches us, and everything kind of touches us because of the beach. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 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 I think where he was coming from is everything's working. Everything was working. There have been some bumps, but everything was working with Mike. And so he just was trying to make sure it didn't go off the tracks. And I, I suggested and because we've got an interim and then we're going to hire somebody, it might be better to have the whole board here. I think it's a great I think it's a great idea. I think if you could give us an update, I think my sense is that after this meeting for if something comes up on a day to day basis, Scott would be the person okay. that we get in touch with. If there's a policy issue or something, again, I think Scott would be your first port of call in the program. Yeah, so similar to the board. Okay. So when we get to know each other a bit, it's not very much, you know, once a month touch or something. Um, it's things that we, we I feel like a, we're three legged stool when it comes to Caspian. Uh, we are there, we live at, um, Tom Schweitzer measures the lake every other week. Um, he is, you know, he's been at the dam making measurements down then and uh, had his own time with Mike on some things. And I worked with him on, on other things that popped up. And we had to get a permit recently to build a decontamination station for the breeder program. Um, that was included by you all um, last year. And we're following up on executing that permit uh, this spring, and we're, we're in the midst of that. Um, managing the lake level is that's that part of that three legged stool. The state owns the water, they don't want anyone to really manage the lake levels anymore, uh, ways and then lowering, ways and then lowering. They want to sort of set it and forget it uh, from a state perspective, but that works fine unless we have a July 10th kind of storm. Um, so what works today seems to be is we do set it and we leave it a, 
alone pretty much. Um, I call Ben Green if I think there's a, we're running into an emergency situation. He's the dam safety engineer. You probably already know Ben. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, so I spoke to him last week, just where we were at. And I was going to meet with you folks and just to um, also have a conversation before we're in the middle of one where he's standing on the Waterbury Reservoir or Brightsville Dam. And bro, I'm trying to ask him for some help. <laughs> so, that's so that all seems to be working. Um, but we but we don't want to wait till the last minute to call like we've done a couple of times. Um, so what the current we're setting um was after the storm that was open way up. Um and after the storm it was supposed to be put back to where it was. They got put back a little smaller than uh the we are opening smaller. Um it's not as small as it was. A number of years ago, um, and uh, that the state allowed us to open it up. Um, so it was like two inches many years ago, one time, set it, and that was arbitrary. We, we tried to get the state to agree to set it. We had a storm, the thing that opened up all the way, and when it got reset, it was around uh, somewhere like six to eight inches. Um, now it's probably set at five. Yeah. Um, so I don't know exactly, but it's it's a little smaller than what it was before the July 10th storm. Um, I said, well, you know, we're coming into dry season. We don't need to deal with it um, now, but we're watching it and we're training just right on annuals right now. It's perfect. And June's not as wet as last year's June. So I'm not concerned with another July 10th. Um, but in, in, in some point in time, I'd like you. The crew to come up and maybe just open it another couple of inches and that'll bring it back to where it was um and just and that was seemed to be a, a good place for five five years ago when and the um, state would be okay with that then so said absolutely you know. so i asked him for that and he said yeah put it back to where it was before july 10th and uh so that's just a small okay. thing on that if i could get you guys to do that um so that's a Lake level management, where are the eyes? You guys have the control in the state. So, um, I want to thank the commission and uh, for the work we did last summer to prevent uh, and prohibit wake boats. Um, if you're following the state thing, April 15th, wake boats are now um, have to operate under a more restrictive rule than other boats. Um, so, the, the petition that asked for a ruling got most of what they want. They wanted a thousand foot from shore, but they got 500 feet from shore. Caspian is one of the eligible lake sport boats, uh, lakes, an 800 acre lake has about a 400 acre um, area of the lake that could be eligible for the sport. Um, you guys all agreed with us that it's potential damage potential safety, all these things. And we put a prohibition of weight boats launching at Caspian Boat Launch, which you guys own. It's not controlled by the state, so we have a special privilege here to set it by you folks. And we want to thank you. We turned away two boats last summer, and they willingly complied. A little bit of disagreement, but we, they, they left. Um, so we didn't have a weight boat on the lake. Excuse me, we had one boat that was weight boat capable, but that owner took his ballast tank out so he would operate no more than the ski boat. And he is an advocate for banning weight boats on every lake other than meant for Magog and Lake Champlain. All the lakes in Vermont are just too small for the sport. So he's his performance. So I just want to thank you and uh, just we're going to keep it that way. Even though it's eligible, there's no place other than the boat launch that you own um, that a boat well, that size could get on. Uh, a few other small. You know, someone could get so, it from the property, presumably. What's that? Someone, someone who has lake access. Correct. So kayaks and canoes and sailboats can get on the lake, but, no. but no no boat size of a lake boat can get on the lake anywhere, even if. No one got off the shore or bottom of the water. I'll be back. So, 
we hope to not have any more this year. And the Greensboro Association and the town of Greensboro has submitted their own petition to just like jet skis and such that we have a prohibition on is to have the lakes. We haven't have it a, a late by and it will be published as its prohibition. Hopefully that will be in place next year. Um, so our breeder program, we have three breeders there at the beach checking boats uh, 74 hours a week, uh, six to six on the weekends, six to six, other than the two hour opening in the noon hour, so two five hour shifts instead um, of two six hour shifts. Uh, so they're there. They know all these stuff. They know they're educators, they're inspectors, they're not law enforcement. Um, they, they won't stop somebody from putting in, but they'll report it. And if it's a weight boat, they will also report it too. So I recommend it. Um, so the only other thing that I think that's future-wise is any work that, I know there was work being done and then being talked about the, the weir um, and spillway as a potential replacement. Um, we just would like to participate in that, not in design and not in engineering, but just as the collective that's uh, around the lake to be um, to be just a, a supportive uh, conduit for the property owner. That's really all I want to share to you. Okay. So okay. let's stay in regular contact after for the time I'm here. Yeah. So. Anything I want what worked really well many years ago, people were complaining the lake's too high, too low, whatever. Andy Dales took that role on. That's my role. Um, John Schweitzer also sort of because of his care about the measuring the lake level on a regular basis, he's kind of my backup. And he was on the beach committee uh, and maybe on the recreation committee still. So I'm now work with the crew to figure out how to get that back up to two inches. Okay. As you request, we can we'll talk about that. And yeah, I, I, I have a photo of the number of <coughs> terms, um, just where we were before. Okay. <coughs> yeah, just give me a buzz. We can get together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. For the record, I will know that Ms. Rambersino is present. Only in body. Michael, you can move down so you can get your arms. Or both move down. We'll get it. The next item on the agenda is the hiring process and timeline. For yeah, I didn't put anything in your um, package really because I need this to be a conversation, but also in the screen, it helps us discuss the small proposal. So there's no right or wrong way to do this process, right? So you already have applications coming in, it's posted all over the world. Uh, and uh, uh, so soon we're going to have to start sorting through applications and figure out what to do. So, can be done any way you'd like. Um, you could have Beth and I do a pre screen for you. You could have she and I in the chair, or she in the chair, or whatever. Um, that's one, but some small group ought to do some initial pre screen. Um, unless you want to have meetings of the whole board of commissioners regularly to be doing that and, and kind of vetting, I suggest that maybe you uh, find two of you willing to work with either Beth or me or along them. And then maybe do our first kind of vetting interview with, with the people that look like they have merit, right? Mm -hmm. This is not to suggest that they're going to make a decision, um, but they can then bring some group of reasonably sized group of finalists back to you um, for you all to do, right? And, and anyone else you'd like. If you want the chair of the select board or the town manager to sit in with you on those as a building thing with the town, you want to just do it yourself, it can be done any way you like. Um, and then once you make a selection, there's a piece of how are you going to make sure this person has the right support among the commission, among the town, among the town's people and the communities you serve so that they can be successful. Because um, ultimately, that's what you're looking to have. You don't want somebody in here for three months 
and then they're on their way, right? So um, you can do anything with all that you want. I just figured I'd start with what what a lot of other places have done as a kind of just broad outline of a process. Um, uh, but we do need to get going. We do actually have applications coming in. We didn't do it as a, um, we're waiting until a certain timeline. This isn't open till fill. If you have the superstar, superstars apply, you can interview them and hire them tomorrow. The way the, 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 the posting went out, I think that's to your benefit. Um, I don't know if you have the exact right person in the grouping that you've already received or not. How many have we received? Uh, and we'll share those with you in a separate session. Okay. Um, right. You know, because um, obviously they don't want people to know who they are yet. Unless yeah. they're going to get the job. <laughs> so just any, any input you have on how you'd like to do it, I, it would be good if you don't have to take a vote, but if we knew generally how you want to proceed so that we could start feeding information to the to the right people so this can start moving along, that would be wonderful. My my recollection from because I did remember I had asked Eric uh, you know about the town process <laughs> I was somewhat involved in it but I was remembering parts of it but I, I subsequently it occurred to me that part of the town process and I don't remember who did the pre screening because there was a pre screening but there was a red pile and a green pile or something like that and so we focused on the the green pile without completely rejecting the red pile. Um, and, and that's probably a, a useful, but there was also, I think there was some kind of a point system or something that was, was set up uh, so that the people who were doing the screening could <laughs> have some sense of, you know, sort of what the, that was not, uh, that was not a pre-screening stage. That was once we were going through that would make sense when you're doing the final interviews because for pre-screening, it would probably take you a number of weeks to even come up with those criteria, um, unless you think it's really obvious and easy. Yeah. Yeah. I think based on the way you crafted the position description, it's pretty clear to me what you're looking for. More mm -hmm. community oriented, more understanding what's going on with policy and, mm -hmm. and certainly the operations piece is important um, as well. Um, really you're looking for that person to kind of be out there and and uh really have part of electric is part of the community we use roger's spreadsheet that we use without being the general manager annually those points in there yeah. these would wait to uh, that would be some but i think to go to the question of where do we start yeah. um and we're not a big board so i mean we could all take a look or if you know, more, I think if, if more than three of you meet, you have to call me in every time. No, no, we could be doing it individually. Right. We could be doing it individually and then sending them to you, for example. Um, I don't know if that's you know, that's one way of doing it. Another way would be for Scott and Beth to sort them into the files. Or five. Oh, I'm sorry. Five. So, in, in so far. In three days. In three, in three days. <laughs> I'm guessing you're going to get 20 or 25 at least before all is said and done. Unless, unless, unless we hire somebody bef right. before. Right. Exactly. Um, well, maybe to throw out the chefs and we get chefs last time. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first cut could be. Well, that's, that's the line cooks. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. I, I think the first cut, just the, the screening for qualification, makes perfect sense for Scott and Beth. Uh, yeah, involving commissioners after this. Okay, and I, I think, but I think that still would be a sorting process sure. rather than. Yeah, we're not throwing anything out. We're yeah. not responding to anybody that they've been eliminated. No, no, that, that so then matter. the next step, <clears throat> once somebody's passed through screening, I think would be to share it with commissioners. Yeah. Um, we can't discuss them amongst, you know. Mm -hmm. But, but then, we could agree. Uh, it's, if we agree, this is agreed. Because the next step is interviews. Yeah. We could say, yes, I agree. This is what we're going to do. Right. But that needs to be communicated, I think, to Scott rather than amongst right. ourselves. Just <laughs> so he sends them out. We look at him and say, yes, we, I think we should interview number one, number three, and number four, but I'm not sure about two. Yeah. And maybe, maybe um, you know, send them out in batches. Yeah. Like, That's what we're planning to do. We said we got this first batch. 
Um, and then I think as we move along the process, I, my sense is it would be good to have some involvement with certainly with OPIC. Mm -hmm. um, and Eric, if, if, if you want to be involved in it or some other member of the select board, I think you know that would be that would be welcome. Um, I don't think this is the same as, as the town manager would we'll want to have a, a bigger public process. Because um, I think I think maybe I think it's just to make it more complicated than it needs to be. And and you'd have to include twelve communities since you said twelve communities. If you really open it up, if we're, well, <laughs> except we don't have to have commissioners from all twelve communities. So um, in fact, we don't have any commissioners from outside of Arctic right now. Yeah. Um, again, I I I, I think that. That, that probably I think this could work. Um, and then once someone's, you know, once someone is hired, the interview process we're gonna have to come up with questions. And I think what you were suggesting is those are criteria, but those, but we're gonna need to come up with a set of questions. Mm -hmm. Um I, if you don't have a problem, I can circulate the questions that were yeah. the interview questions right. that were used for the town manager just to give you a flavor. Right. Of of, right. of of what was what was done, but I think we're gonna we're gonna need to be asking people the same questions. Mm -hmm. uh, we can follow up if something gets raised in an interview. Um, and in terms of interviewing, again, I think we're we should get as many of us as possible, uh, and we're just gonna have to have special meetings to to do it. And if you'll get me uh, the list of questions there, then. Yeah, go on. We can put those together and I can suggest some additional that are more specific to a, well, this industry. And, and some of them won't be, probably right. won't be. Yes, right. I can pull that together and then distribute that to each of you individually. And then you can respond to me and so try to amalgamate that back together. That would be wonderful. Get you a set of questions. And most of the you know, you end up with 16 questions, you have time for five. So you also have to do a little bit of rank ordering, like which are the most important to you all. Because you're never getting, you're, you're going to say all 16 of these, I can't live without any of these on the list. And you're going to look at the clock and you're going to be on question five and you already promised them you're giving them 10 minutes for them to ask you questions and you're going to go now. So just, you've all been through this, I know, but just to remind you. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an important thing. Yeah. Good. That's really all I need for tonight. There's many other details as we go further into the process. I just want to make sure as they start flying in um, that we get that to you. I know uh, uh, we're going to get to the final posted um, content. I did check with the chair. Um, I realized that the final document you guys came up with didn't have the, um, the pieces in it. There was nothing about Hardwick in it. So I grabbed that and something from the town that had a little glove attached to one of their position things. I think it was attached to the alignment position. There's alignment and then uh, the equal opportunity for their stuff was yeah. always in every position. Yeah. And so I added that to the bottom. The rest of the content was all 100% the same as you approved. Just occurred to me that those were missing and particularly the equal opportunity employees get in trouble with something. So I figured you'd like me to add that. So I did. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that's all I really need for tonight on that. We can get that going. He said you'll get the first packet probably tomorrow. And we'll talk about it tonight if you want to so. say. Yeah. Okay. Good, thank you. Anybody have any other thoughts, comments, questions? Scott, are they usually one round of interviews or do you see? It can be more. Um, you know, uh, frequently it is. Um, Sometimes you just have the right person and you know it's the right person and you're done. Um, but you know, usually these first interviews you usually schedule now for right. because you're interviewing more people. Um, and then you might get down to two and say, whoa, I really was that one. You know, the first one, depending on where they're coming to, they might even be on video. Well, that, and I you'll want that finals to come here, spend three or four hours, you know, getting deeper with the town, getting deeper with all of you. Meet with Brian and you know and others and you know, yeah, the yeah. current practice I've been seeing used is um exactly what Lynn said. It's a, the first interview is a screening interview yeah. about an hour. Exactly. And it's in this day and age, it's almost always by Zoom. Yeah. 
you don't want to pay to fly. Well, if someone's local, we can do it yeah. reverse. But, but okay. otherwise, yeah, I don't think we could fly. And then if they pass through that, then you go the whole exactly. longer and more, more interview. Yeah. That's what I would have. So I would anticipate you, but you might find just the right person saying, I'm very not. You know, as you said, that's all. <laughs> this is a good job. Just say that out loud. I know you're all struggling with some things, but this is a, a well respected, good company. Um, and you know, you've got a good electric system here. You know, the things that you're struggling with are. So easily fixable. Like this is this is a good job. You're going to have good outlooks, okay? And these positions, by the law standards, as you know, these positions pay very nicely. Um, and so you, you should expect to get a really good applicant. But there's nothing about hard work or this position that ought to scare people off. Just that's all. Thank you. Lots of grants. Yeah, this can be short. I'm sorry we didn't get this in the original packet, um, but we sent it to you today. Um, sorry for being late, but it really is mostly just to get you thinking. Um, you know, so we all know about the floods last July, um, and uh, recently the state had $96 million fall in the lot of flood mitigation. So it's federal money, but the decision making is 100% at the, at the state level. Um, and so when you divide $96 million by you know, the number of counties we got, it won't work that way. Don't worry about it. Um, but there's a lot of money. So you ought not just let, you know, uh, Morrisville have all the money, right? <laughs> or really, um, or well, since I'm the market. Um, you know, so there's the stuff you're already working with FEMA on. So don't worry about that. But surely there's other things. It, things didn't even have to work for this money. It didn't even have to have been impacted by this mitigation of floods um, in July or December. If you have issues where you're worried about flooding, um, uh, I mean, we were talking the other day about you know, the bridge across to your shop and whether or not th th that's not quite stable in there. We could actually apply for funding. Um, I don't know what else we got. I'm just starting to ask people for ideas. Arguably, that's what I'm asking you. But I've also already talked to Opie. One of the things we're doing in Marshall is the village and the town are actually going to co apply for everything. Um, so that there's a collaborative, not a battle, right? Um, you know, this isn't a village, it's a little different in Hardwick, but we've already talked about that same model. Um, we can at least support each other if we don't co-apply. Um, got to August 16th for pre applications, each project's pre application. As a quasi competent technology person, I could fill out in less than 10 minutes. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, it could be done quicker. Um, by somebody that really flies on the keyboard. Um, so the first round, which the state is encouraging people, don't try to prioritize yourself, just put all your ideas in. Um, that's basically what the training, I went to the training as did one of your town staff, um, I forget her name. Um, I think she said she was in zoning or something like that. Oh, Kristen, yeah. yeah maybe. Um, so she was there as well and heard about all the opportunities um, here. And they really were just saying, Put it all in. Don't just don't presume you know what we're looking for. for, for so, so was, and you were fixing the bridge when we applied to move the shop. Maybe uh, no, 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 no. Wait, that bridge also gives access to someone's house. Well, I'm not saying take the bridge down. <laughs> okay, and, but, and get us out of there. So yeah. the floods, you know, the shop is out of the water. Yeah, right? that that would be a good thing. But I mean, the bridge is going to need to be there in any case, and it's our property unless we're transferring the property to somebody else, we're going to have responsibility for the, the other half of the meeting gets it, what we were just talking about, you know, since you widened the, the thinking, um, which was, there was at least seven federal agencies at this meeting in addition to a whole bunch from the state. And it was really weird because it really wasn't from the government I'm here to help. It was kind of a bizarre thing. <laughs> but, um, and, uh, but then they made a really interesting offer which I took note of, which is worth thinking about. And it's again, another great place to collaborate with the town, which is they basically said, they, they spent four hours talking at us about all their programs and how they run and what you can and can't do and blah, 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 basically making us all want to fall asleep in our chairs. And then they said, and by the way, for those of you that want to, come up with every idea of the problems you got, 
um, in your community that relate to water movement of any kind. And then just invite us and all the federal agency, federal and state agencies will come to town and you can, you can one project after another describe the issue and we'll tell you which program to apply for and how it works and we'll help you figure out how to move forward. What a great thing to collaborate with the town on, right? Mm -hmm. Potentially host that big meeting and invite them in. Um, and who knows, you know, a lot of that, they, those federal agencies have some grant money. They have a lot of zero interest loan money these days. They have some low, in, uh, low interest loan money. They have a lot of technical assistance. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Um, and, and project by project, whether you're willing to live with the federal strikes, because I'm sure you all know from dialogues you probably have had about FEMA, you know, everything comes with a lot of strength. So you don't always want to take it, even if they tell you you're going to be a winner. Like behind this door is you know, $5 million and it's all yours. Um, it may cost you $10 million to get the $5 million in strength, right? So I, I say invite them advisedly, but it's, to me, it was a great opportunity to think about working together with the town and, and who knows, maybe there is something there that can be really beneficial for a hard electric, the town, both of us, who cares, right at that point. Um, bring some money here, get some issues solved, um, you know, and do some good in town. So it's really just informational for you and, and to see, you know, to gauge if you're at all interested in either thinking about project ideas and potentially applying for the state auto money, which is here now, and or collaborating on, on an invitation to the to the feds to come in and hear about all the various issues in town that could stand some infusion, infusion of money um, to make some of these things less prone to flood. If FEMA doesn't come through on the dredging, the walk up that you talked about yeah. in, in your report, is that something that this potentially, potentially could be used? I hope for them. Be, we're meeting with them tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We'll hope for them. We'll be there. And so I'm hoping we just somehow it didn't get on our list back then. The good news is it did get on their inspection report when the FEMA inspector came up. They noted it. Brian's one about that. Um, somehow we didn't create a project. Um, debris projects are supposed to be done by July 14th. Um, I'm assuming if they were just going to say no, they wouldn't have set up a meeting for tomorrow with us to talk about it. Um, so um, you can get extensions to the July 14th. So I'm hopeful that they'll agree to add it as a project um, and, and we'll have to just move fast. Um, you know, fortunately, in Morrisville, we literally just finished at the end of last week the very same dredging project at the Morrisville Dam and went through the whole bid process and the whole thing and, you know, we Cody and, you know, so he just finished and you know, we'll have to look carefully at your procurement policy, um, which you can't sole source unless your procurement policy, I'm still not sure you can on a project like this. You might have to do a short form quote process, but I know that we sent, we found a lot of people in the state that can do dredging so. And we just sent it to a wall and tell so you that list. <laughs> I have that list. And I've already told the state and army corps to expect a request for permit from us because you got to have permits. I got those in the so, Um You can't get them to dredge. Um, so so I, I'm hopeful we'll, find, we'll learn more about them. So, how do we go about identifying? I would say just if any of you have any ideas about potential projects you want to about, about town, whether it relates to our infrastructure or not. I'm obviously going to talk to Brian and some of his guys, the folks in the office, and I'm talk to OB and you know, just anywhere you can just feed it to me and we'll start putting all the CSI. If, if there's uh, the, uh, the different dams we own and are responsible for candidate projects. Absolutely. Because we do have, even though they don't contribute to our power yeah. generation. They contribute some liability, right. and that's Caspian, which Stu was talking about. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so next nice. pond, and of course our big dam. Yeah, we can definitely look around those. Okay. And we got it. So what's that? Well, what did you say? Well, it's just in or you get you give a list of dams, but there's also East Long, oh. Mattville. Oh. Uh, Jackson Dam, Nichols, 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 Nichols,
Sure. No, they're just a, they're they're a source of expense and liability. That's right. And Wolcott, which which is both. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, we still have not had an inspection of the dam itself, as I recall, unless something is from whom. It, since since the the flooding to assess whether there are any issues structurally with the oh, dam that would be on us. That would be on us. Okay. I believe. Unless Brian, are you aware? I think it might have somebody in what the lawn doing. Right, but the last time that oh, we discussed it with him, my recollection is it hadn't been. I can. I'll look through the records. I know most of the companies that do that on dams. We, the Green River Dam, for which I'm responsible, is a park regulated dam. So we have to do these federal park park well be inspections. And yeah. So I know that whole list of engineers that do this. Yeah. Sort of work. This look at is not that. No, thank goodness. I know. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I know a bunch of people that can do that sort of inspection. It's just a damn thing. Exactly. Good. So yeah, feed me anything anytime and we'll just start putting those together and hopefully you know, I've agreed to compare notes. I think he's planning to talk to you guys if he hasn't yet. Um so we'll be good if you get some of that on here. For me, I'd rather all state and all of our own personal private prop, prop pockets, but if it's gonna get spent somewhere in the United States of America, some of it ought to be in our <laughs> That's right. Well, yes. Once there's a program, there's no value in not applying. So you're, not, you're not reducing the, the tax liability. Perfect. Um, okay, the next item on the agenda is the general manager's report. Okay, I don't need to talk about everything in here, but there's a few of them I didn't want to specifically mention. I'm happy to answer questions on any. Um, Talked about that one. Oh, yeah, I did want to just, and I know you're you're ready to take this on. Um, and just the notion that we got to make sure we're um, on our rotation to hit the select board meetings. I'm going this Thursday. Um, we got to make sure we get that rotation. Yeah, and I think I think I think we need to sort of relook at the at the calendar. Um, I don't know, Beth. Do you have the last list of of who was on? I think the town has the calendar. I think the town has the calendar because the town called me. Yeah, they yeah. Well, I know, I know. So who would that be? Is that Tanya? I've got an email. I've got an email from, uh, it was either from Casey or it might have been from Amanda. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> noting that Nat was supposed to be going this month and that Mike was supposed to be going next month. And so, oh, I see. And so, <laughs> And so uh, asking who's 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 going, and so Scott's going this week. Yep. We we haven't decided who's going. And next month is July. Well, I um, got a new commission. <laughs> we do have a new commission. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nat, we'll just call you Nat. <laughs> well, I you know. <laughs> well, yeah, the way the way it's worked with commissioners going is that um, Mike would give us a briefing, and, you know, list of things that have been going on, so that we could talk semi intelligently about what was going on. And then sometimes questions come up, and we can answer them. We answer them, and if not, we say we'll find out. Um, so and it's it's pretty short. Um, so if you would like to do it. And when it'll be third the third Thursday yeah. in July, which is the 18th of July. I may not be here. I'm headed for uh, Northern Quebec fishing. Oh, good. Um, we usually swap them around too. Like yeah, good. one of us has a trip or something, we'll just yeah. horse train. Yeah. The last two weeks are July. Well, that would be in the last two weeks. It might be in the last two weeks. Might be in the last two weeks in July. <laughs> He knows how he's going to count it now. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to get back to the tech. Well, I'll, I will find out then what we have as 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 the as the list for the balance of the year. 
and um, all right. Um, a number of these that I want to raise, and really just wanted to raise so I get a flavor of if these are things you're interested in talking about as we go forward. So, like one of them, I know there's a bunch of history about you know um, how we bill customers and what we bill them for and all of that. So, you know, as I said to your chair, every utility does it different. So there, there's this principle that you know uh, customers are supposed to pay for their share of the of expense. Um, uh, and you know, new customers ought not put a new burden on existing customers. So there's these principles and practices, but there's a lot of gray zone in there that you can play with, right? So you, you, you bucket it in three ways. You can say, no matter what, every penny, all the time, going to the customer. Some people have made decisions that certain things are just system costs um, because eventually we're all gonna have to do it. And some people find room in the middle. Um, Transformers is the easy way, easiest way to think about this. You know, you charge the whole, when a transformer needs to be upgraded, you charge for the whole cost of the new transformer. You charge for the marginal differential cost of the one that's there in the new one because you don't put the old one back in the stock. Would you just say the state's forcing us to electrify everything anyway, so there ought to be a system cost? Um, this is not the answer to none. That's just one a tiny example of a very big round. When you pull the cork on this, you got to talk a lot about it, right? So it's no trivial conversation. But with the conversation, I know or I don't know anything. I intuit that you've been having about um, customer billings and the role of customer and how we work with customers. And you know, um, it struck me that you might want to have that conversation. I just want to make sure you know there's definitely room. We have definitely been um, here at Housewick on on many, many, many other utilities in Vermont on the customer order bear the whole cost. Um, and that doesn't make us wrong, um, but if you're wanting to see a different day, there's room to have that conversation. I just want to make sure you know that. Yeah, I, I, I think what we're doing is wrong. And I've said this before. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, because I think that we are getting value back from the customer and the customer is getting a different. So we are profiting in essence, or all of our other rate payers are profiting <laughs> off of an individual customer's project when they have to put an upgraded transformer. In. And I think we see more project work this time of year. So I would really hate to put that particular question off because there may well be projects that are coming up that are gonna be affected by it. Um, and I, I would like to see us go with the marginal cost approach on, on transform. Wait, could I ask the question is there, since we've got the opportunity to Scott, does the, in your view, Scott, does the Morrisville plan reflect what Lynn's expressing? You know, in other words, Morrisville we, does the middle and Morrisville does, does the marginal cost. So long as you know the superintendent determines that the one that's sitting on the pool today actually can go into stock and doesn't have to be shipped out. Right. If it has yeah. to be shipped yeah. out, it's trash and it's time to get rid of it. But if he's planning to keep it in the yard, hang it somewhere else, then we do the marginal cost. It doesn't make what we're doing right, but I'm not here to say that. No, and I think you know, the reason I want to raise that thing is, um, you know, we have a choice with Scott's help. We can start with a blank sheet of paper and we can try to create something that's from whole cloth that's just totally new. Or if, we, if we're not hungry for that exercise, we can look at the Morrisville one with your view of what it's like to operate it. Because we'll be looking at words on the page. You've actually read the page and lived with it for a few years. Maybe, maybe there's one out there that we could adopt. We don't have to create it. I, that may be, but I think even before we get to that, and I'm, I'm not advocating a blank sheet of paper yeah. at, all, at all. I, yeah. I think that's not generally a good way to, to start. But I think that this one change is a relatively small change in what we're already doing. Ah, I follow you. I don't, but then we had the question of the timing of the payments, too. How do you address that? You, you would charge them the marginal cost up front. Yeah, right. I'm not I'm not advocating change right now. Okay. The time. I'm just talking about one discrete yep, yep, piece yep, yep. 
where if we're if we're getting value back. Mm -hmm. Customer should get the benefit of that. Rena? Question for Beth. How would you depreciate 30 year old transform and put a value? There's another underlying question to that is we don't always know how the transform is. So we don't know how much depreciation is on it. Our records are not that detailed. In the last 10 years, yes, they are. But anything prior to that? We don't know how old that transformer is to know the depreciated value. But depreciation is just an accounting. That's right. Yes. Um, it's just an accounting exercise. And depreciation may or may not say what's the useful life. I think that's what you're getting. What we have to react to is does it have useful life, whether it's depreciated down to zero or it's got a lot of life. What really matters is what's its useful life, what's its economic My life. My question to Scott is. Um, if there, if it's deemed there is no useful lot, does the customer pay the full cost of the insurance fund? Yeah. But if, but if, but if, if, if there's just to be clear, if there's, if, if we decide it's going into inventory, we treat it as if it's a new transfer. We only pay the hard difference of what we buy. Ten can be ten kva versus a fifteen kva. That's all they charge. And when you use that ten kva elsewhere, you're charging that customer. Correct. Price of a new 10k transfer. Yeah. Oh, and I teach you all of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got you. I got you. Yeah. So I, I shared Lynn's instinct for the middle path, but I'm curious. Well, have you, Scott? Do you have a sense of the scale of the financial implications for the systems that treat everything as a system upgrade? Um, modest today, and there are some doing it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's some that are fearful about as heat pumps and electric vehicles really start coming on um, that it will become significant. Um, the other way to think about that when you really get to the point where you're seeing a flood of heat pumps and EVs and everyone's doing this, not just the market leaders, um, to the customer, um, while there may be a big cost to hardware electric, but the customer won't be any different because if they're all paying for their own transformer, and then the rates stay a little bit lower, or if it's all system costs and rates are a little bit higher, right. if, if, if it really is truly everyone, yeah, but it won't, it won't, it won't, it won't be all at once. We won't even get to the critical mass. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a tipping point here where it makes sense. I don't know where the tipping point is. Um, I've been reluctant to go there because it's clear we're so early on the leadership journey, and there's so much resistance, particularly to EVs in Vermont, not so much to heat pumps. Um, some heat pumps, but particularly the EVs, that we're a long way from you know, becoming a mad rush that creates this flood of need. Honestly, utilities won't have to be the ones that declare all the system costs. At some point, probably within two or three years, when the state passes the clean heat standard, because they will next year. Um, at that point, I think you'll see the PUC just mandate that we all make a system cost, all improvements, because the policy of the state of Vermont will be the official policy at that point will be that we're all supposed to have all the pumps and all the Vs. Um, so at that point, the PUC is going to say, well, then this should all be the system cost. Right. My way of thinking in Morrisville, we're going to stay in the middle course until we get ordered to go all the way. Mm -hmm. That's been, again, yeah, I'm not trying to say we're doing it right. That's not the point here. No, that's helpful context. Yeah, good question. Good question out here. And so I don't, this may be like a real minor thing, but in, in the case of a, a temporary service, um, do you, does Morrisville charge the customer for the full cost of the transform? Or how does that work? Depends on what we're doing with the cut with the with the temporary service. So are we tagging them off of an existing transformer or are we putting something in that we know we're taking it right back out? Or is it are we putting in the temporary service, are we using the same one we're going to mount on a new pole? It kind of depends right. on the context. I don't know how you guys would do that here, though, but it depends on how we're doing the temporary service. I don't know if we need a motion. How about this? How about I put together a recommendation and write up how this would work for you? And it's yeah. in the form of the policy. Why don't you just, yeah, write the Revise the policy. Revise the policy. We'll yeah. uh, so that we can vote on it. Let me see. 
Yeah. All right. Um, a couple of quick additions to kind of hit the FEMA stuff, so that's all going well. Um, we have two things coming today to Beth. One is that um, uh, Senator Sanders has included um, a project that will get the sluice gate, the sluice gate in his congressional direct spending um, request to Congress. That doesn't mean you got anything yet, it just means it's on his list. But that means it will be public soon, so the world's going to know that Senator Sanders is uh, trying to help hard work. Right? So, would you like to ask questions about it from the press? Mm -hmm. so he likes to have the press, right? So, um, long road from here to there, I will tell you Department of Energy hates congressionally directed spending, and it's uh, uh, many federal agencies don't mind it at all. Department of Energy hates it. And so, it's a particularly tough slog um, for anyone, even Senator Sanders. Um, to carry the day. He did get one for Stowe a couple of years ago and got it through. So it's not impossible. It's just, you know, I just, I like people to have eyes wide shut, right? Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a, DOE fight sees like crazy, like more than any agency down there. Because um, they, they're sure that they know it's good. Um, they know what else possibly could. And the other one is that there was a recent decision about loan interest. Do you want to fill that in? Uh, FEMA has said that the loan, Interest on loans that were intended to pay for these disaster, like we got the Vermont Law Bank loan, all that interest is 100% reimbursable by Great. Wow. That's good. Um, the next item I want to hit quick, and again, it's just mostly, I'm not going to be here likely when you file an integrated resource plan, but I don't know how involved you've been in the past. These are every three year plans. My experience in Vermont is most commissions and trustees have not been involved. Um, you know, we've just started talking in a very micro way about all of the new state policy that exists or is about to come rushing at you. So there's a whole lot of stuff that you're going to be required to do. And the integrated resource plan is we have to deal with all that. Um, so my bias is to start uh, a dialogue with you to kind of begin to keep things up and you and your new manager to start laying these topics out. Um, you want to make any decisions. You're supposed to have your plan submitted in October. There's no way that you're going to be before the first quarter of next year. So you've got time. You don't have to make any decisions, but it's important for you to understand the context of what's being driven down at you. And you're not, you can't say no. Like you just, you know, you can't say no. <laughs> so it's good to know, and it, but there are different ways you can react to that. And one good example is, you know, um, and there's, again, you're not trying to say one right and one wrong, but, you know, when you deal with reliability, you propose to spend billions of dollars, like we want powers in the underground world system, um, or you do, you know, um, true wire and then some other, um, you know, reliability systems, you know, a, a centralized battery that keeps a lot of people on instead of really for economic homeschooling. You know, there's choices of how to get there from here. One is more frugal than in keeping with the municipal history and context. Um, and one is what you expect an investor in the utility to do, as every time they spend capital, they get a 12% guaranteed rate of return um, for a quarter. So it doesn't make them wrong. Again, it just is what it is. If that's your job, you want to capitalize everything because you make a higher profit and capitalizing and you operate. Um, just have to understand the models people work with them. It's called the Avery Johnson proposition. Yeah. yeah. So is that worth about continuing to dive to discuss and bring up? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's a good one. Um we'll talk about that when I think you later. Um I did want you to know that you know part of what that's going to be in that IRP is a, the state now requires a technology roadmap. That's is actually developing one. Um, so, but as I was talking to Beth today, there won't be a time in the next 10 to 12 years where you don't have a, a pretty high stakes technology practice on. That's just one of the things that will come out of your IRP. And we are really required to have an energy power and rate um, coming off of data, coming directly from the vehicles, not through any meters or anything else, going to manufacturers, pinging to you, and then you have to figure out how to get it in development. Um, that's one. In a couple of years, you'll have a low, you'll end up with a low income rate when you're by the state. That will require a technology project. You know, there's point is always going to be a big high yeah, state. Yeah, we're gonna fight the world. So <laughs> yeah, that next 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 <laughs> seven. 
Yeah. <laughs> Next session is when that would come up. So I'm um, AMI's in here, and uh, you know, from my perspective, you know, I know that you've had some dialogue about that. Um, for me, it, the real play is operations. Like you get with all the solar on the system. The reason we're doing it in Morrisville, um, which may or may not be a reason what they care about, but I can test for voltage anytime I want once you put that in. And we have a lot of voltage problems. Uh, we've got a customer wanting to know if our lines can handle certain things now. We had AMI on that line. We could <clears throat> literally push a button and find out if it's going to be able to handle. Um, and it also lets us do outage management automatically by direction so that the customers can see it in off the call. Um, uh, and our crews can clear outages in the field as they're clearing them. Public automatically sees it. There's just a lot of operational benefits. Um, and I don't think you'll ever get it for 50 cents on the dollar again. This is really the last bite at the apple because you'll be the old, you and Hyde Park at the end of this will be the only utilities in the state that didn't do it. Um, so it just this can be for a future meeting, but we're just making sure that you know where you landed. And I know it wasn't a final, final, at least what I heard decision. Um, that said, it's kept you in the mix. So they moved you to the third year of the utilities doing it under the state grant. The state grant came out with the maximum, not the minimum. The economics they brought you were the minimum they thought you'd get. It came out at the maximum that you get. So there's even some new math. Um, it really can't, did come out at 50 cents on the dollar. Um, so it's probably worth at some point if you're upward to bring Ken Roller back in the conversation again. It would be good to have that conversation, especially if the numbers have changed. Um, and also to hear about some of the, because we were not hearing about operate, some of the operational stuff. Um, and because at least my understanding, I don't know about others, was that the reason that we came out where we came out was a function of really the lack of density on, of, of usage on our distribution system and the terrain so that there needed to be more wire and more receivers or DMUs in particular. So yeah. like you have more of those repeaters than anybody else and figuring out how to make that work is important and, and unique to hard work. So we do have to think about that. And, and that was what was driving the cost yeah. analysis that and and not like, you know, not being able to replace a meter meter because we only have one. Yeah, I'll tell you, like, I didn't even share the economic analysis with the trust, with the Morrisville trustees when we did it, because I didn't agree with the math either. You, you, when you're a small community and you have one meter reader, you still need a meter tech. Somebody has to fix those. So I thought that was the wrong way to sell it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the numbers, the numbers of the consultant repair just did not pass muster in right. my view, I think uh, our collective view, and that's why we said, the numbers, we're not doing our job if we don't respond to the numbers. And the numbers didn't come together and make a case. So if you can look at the new information and look at maybe even the old way we look at the numbers, and if you can wrestle the numbers to make sense, we're actually eager. We were disappointed. Well, yeah, no, I think, I think, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think that the numbers are we weren't hearing a lot about non or more less easily quantifiable benefits. Um, and and so it's you know it may sway things. You know, the sense that you heard were fictitious. Yeah, yeah. Delved into the numbers and meanings. I agree with the same more so. They say I didn't even bother. I basically went to the trustees and said, just assume we're not saving any money. But here's all the operational benefits you're going to get. And oh, by the way, once at the very end of this, so here's everything we get, and that's a good reason to do it. At the end of this, the state's going to mandate the people who didn't do it to do it. Um, with all these programs we're talking about that they're going to force you to do, you're going to have to have them. And then there's not going to be any grant money. So that's not a great sales pitch. It is. <laughs> I started with the operational thing. Right, and there are a lot of people just think about you know the guy basically being able to triage where they go next because their maps are populated by the AMI meters telling them where everything's out. They don't have to guess that well, if that person's out, probably the whole run is out based on one phone call. They're going to know, they're going to be able to look at a, at a um, pat, um, iPad or whatever on tablet and say, Oh, this is where we need to go next, you know, 
um, at a glance. And so more, more of that for future. What, what's the timeline, Scott? It sounds like those has kept us in the mix, but we need to. I think you've got, by the end of the year, I'll have to double check with Ken. Um, you know, because this would be the third tranche of municipalities we'll install in 2026. So we're getting early. Let's, at some point in 2025, it would get to be too late. Um, you know, at this point, the meter vendor's been selected. The first group of communities is already installing. Um, you know, the basic configuration of the meter's been set, you know, based with all the utilities participation. So, you know, we're getting down there, but there is still time for sure. I can check with Ken. One utility that did it years and years ago now they're replacing it. Just so, okay. so, yep. Which is how old was that? It was for 10 years old. Yeah, that's my fear. This technology changes exponentially. Like all technology, yeah. that's going to be a piece of crap in five years. Yeah. You know, so that, unfortunately, when we live in a technology based world, that's that is the burden we bear. Right? Doesn't make it right. It just is. Um, the other one I just wanted to hit quickly to see if you want to have a conversation about is really, um, I know we have some other things to get to. Um, so one more topic and one more just announcement and we'll get to the executive sessions. Um, is, you know, so we had the, uh, the customer issues down near the Yellow Barn, the building next to it. There's now a proposal out in that part of town for another very heavy electric use. Um, we'll need to get into the details of that tonight. Um, what I wanted to make sure you're aware of is, you know, I know that Mike had originally had a capital, and you know, capital project kind of make improvements out in that direction of town for like five years from now. But between those two projects and this other one that may be coming, like we may need, you know, particularly since, you know, uh, supply chain is what it is, in many cases it's still a year, year and a half. Um, we may need to start, when you get the budgeting, to start putting money for design of what that project is going to be in this coming budget, get things moving um, and advance that project much more quickly um, to begin making these improvements. And, and you know, Ryan obviously will have a lot to say in that, and whoever we are as an engineer. But I just want you to know, you know that that's a good cascade. It means the community is thriving and growing and more good things are happening. Um, and it's one of those first stress points that we're going to have to, we're going to have to pull that from the future more to us today. I don't know how close to the day yet. I just wanted to make sure that you check and see if that's a dialogue worth having with you in the short term. For sure. That's, that's a yeah. yes. Okay, it's, it's, good. It's definitely a yes. And uh, the kind of advertisement is just really because it impacts you is in the report we added this note from the LCT. Um, things about open meeting are changing. So the COVID area, era opportunity to have purely online meetings doesn't exist any after June. Come July. Um, I checked with the VLCT and we would be a non advisory body. You would be? Yeah. You make budgets and you think, wow, that's shocking. Okay, I'm shocked. Good. <laughs> then you're okay. I can't believe no, that. No, no, no. The advisory bodies. Oh, you are not. Okay, sorry. Are non advisory uh, body. Yeah, and so, so we, have, we still have to have somebody present okay. in a physical place. Yeah. So we can do hybrids, yeah. but we can't do. And you have a requirement to either have audio or video and post it publicly for at least 30 days um, of July. And, and that's something we need to talk with HCTV about. Maybe Beth, if you could do that to make sure that they, that they in fact keep it Posted. I assume that that's a good. The last point. time I looked at their website, they had it back for several. Yeah, no, no, I know. I, that that we're lining up now. Yeah. It, now with the yeah. with the with, okay. the with the rules the way okay. that they're talking and about. We'll, we'll review the website to make sure that this information that has to be there about the meeting law is there, and then just be aware that at least some of you, particularly you, and looks like I would say if a select board chair has to go to training annually, then you probably do. Um, sorry, let's chair with this slide. Well, well, they, that they don't, that they don't so, say. Uh, I have to just, just be aware. Right. I just want to make sure you know that the way the meetings else. work is changing. So, that's what I have. Is there any other stuff to the answer for you? You and I have talked about, um, again, transformers and, and the long lead time on them. And that Marso, Yep. That keeps them stuck. Yep. 
And um, I, I think that's something that, that we should be talking about. <laughs> That, that it makes again from a from a customer relations standpoint, people don't have to wait as long once we have inventory. Um, and and again, with all the changes coming down the road, as well as just underlying growth, it it seems like it's it's a prudent thing to to do. You know, we try to keep fair stock in front. I um, mean, frankly, what became clear to myself, um, our trustees and our electric super is that, you know, post COVID, we're not going back to just in time supply chain. Um, there's just too much screwed up in the world right now, and it's not going to change anytime soon if you study geopolitics. So, going back to that Nirvana supply chain, just in time stuff, um, it just isn't going to happen. And, and that's kind of what's played out. We, we're this far away from COVID, and for any any um, transformer of any size, you still have to wait a really long time. He can still order 10, 15, 25s and get a truck order in a reasonable amount of time. Um, um, Ooh, right, yeah. Particularly with refurbished ones. But when the new federal rules come in, where we won't be able to get refurbished ones anymore because now there's an energy efficiency um, requirement, when that happens, you're going to have to buy new ones of those. Everyone that buys refurbished cars is going to all of a sudden um, become new demand, even in the small transformer market, and that's going to flow with with demand. Uh, so this is going to become a really big problem. It really is always going to be a really big problem. So how how do we start the shift? What we did is we just started um, ordering, basically making orders every quarter until we had you know nine to twelve months of transformers in front of us. We we would estimate what we think customer demand was going to be and try to um, build the inventory to that level. Um, and we've been pretty successful doing that. Does a customer come in that needs a unique size transformer that we don't have on site? Somebody convinced that I need a 167 and a half. We don't have that on site. Okay. Um, <laughs> and it would probably take us a year and a half to get it. Um, but for normal size stuff, you know, we try to have it sitting there if we can. Um, so how can we go about implement? Is this something you could you if, know, if, talk with Brian about? We can talk about it and then we can come back next time and see, just let you know if we try to go that way, you know, it's going to put a burden on this year's budget, um, but we're going to start getting into in front of it. Um, it's a good investment in my mind and it only hits your operating um, sheet, not your balance sheet, because on the balance sheet, the asset's still sitting there. I think that's still it's actually well, it's, it's, it's the reverse. Yeah. But it's, 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 but it's the capital expense. Yeah, it's, so capital. it's not going to hit the PL. So it's, it's not going to hit the PL. It's going to hit. Yeah. It's going to. Um, and we have some capital budget that was not firmly allocated <laughs> to particular projects. Well, let us take a look at that. Yeah, I think there's a way we can. Yeah, let the good. three of us take a look at that and see how we can make the numbers work, and we'll bring back a recommendation to you. Um, we get in front of that, and, you know, and we try to keep some spools of wire around not as much because that's not as hard to get. And there's yeah. some things we don't. We, we have to take yeah. personal some things, you know, just do. People take spools of wire, and they don't usually take transformers. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so, all right. The, imp the implication of this, which I support, is that we'll have to be using more capital, so we'll have to be borrowing more money on average. And, and that's what we were getting organized to do anyways. Yeah. You definitely, by doing that, will end up with a happier customer base because you'll yeah. be able to react. And it's better for the community to doing the project. And yeah. that's what the union's here to do. Right? Right. That's exactly why we exist. If we're not doing things like that, we might as well be in you know, a private utility. Sense. I just have one quick. I left a message last week about looking at those poles between the Island Center for the Arts and Willie's for the dugout the culvert. Looks like they dug down about three foot. Yeah, did you ever get a chest? Yeah, I looked at them. They're fine. They're fine. They don't get me down the woodway. They're going to be putting balls. Okay, I'm going to make sure. Yep. Good. I saw, I saw one of our trucks going out. What was it on Saturday? Yeah, we had a broken pole. Yeah, I, I was in that. You were in that one. I was in that one. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I turned around. I went. Yeah. I went back to Marsville and came.
12 to look at this. Uh, I had a guy with the boys this morning who can't get those little coats into the ground. They don't come out from me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I would amaze me that something this big at base always. Yeah, like I, it, was, it was a beautiful sunny afternoon. I don't know. Texting. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you like? Okay. Yeah. Well, you're probably used to more on the technical details and maybe less on some of this policy stuff. And after you go around, you want to so much for you. This, this was great. This yeah, was this was Excellent. Okay, we go to the financial report. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> I will say, as a new set of eyes, you know, you guys are in good shape. You're in good standing financially, you're good cash on hand. For me, I know it hasn't always been that way, and went through some tough times, and you've been dealing with an incredibly painful where it increases like everybody else. And, but you know, your system's in good shape, your team's great, that's great. Like, that's the one you don't want that keep you up at night. You're in good shape on that part. Doesn't mean it won't be hard to make the money work going forward, it will be, but but you know, you're in, you're in solid financial shape. And just to reiterate something we talked about the last meeting that Beth said on totally on top of is that we, now that we've secured the funds, we just really need to make sure that we're not subsidizing month to month and right. month to month deficit deficit with funds that we that we borrow for the purpose of doing projects. Right. And when we um, when we had a bunch of cash come in a few years ago. Two, three, I don't know, the clock's spinning, but we had some settlement money come in and we talked about it. And in the end, what we did with that money is we subsidized lower rates. Uh, we just went longer before we did our rate increase. Yep. We can't we can't be borrowing money now for projects and then using it to subsidize yep. operations because yep. that would really do it. Yep. So somehow Beth's, I think. The key is that we don't have the mentality that we got lots of money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't have a lot. special money. You don't have a lot. I see the invoices in for contract and that is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even, if, even if the federal government isn't making us pay the interest, it's still, you know, it's money we got to pay for those projects yeah. and not to pay for operation. Actually, there was one question that I had on the accounts payable on the General Weather Report on page 42, which which is a was payment to um I'm guessing to Brooke. Uh, yes. And I, I just wondered what was it was the um Nichols Pond and she had never I asked my grandma, he said she had never sent us shouldn't say ever. He said it's been a long time since she sent us any invoices for her work on the pond. And and when she sends an invoice, is that and is there a detailed Mm -hmm. Um uh, no, she's recording each each day in all the hours each, and that's each time that. she works on it, yeah. And what she does. I've never seen her, her bill. I can get one for you. Yeah, I, I wasn't like taking my okay. head how to shoot those kinds of bills. On special litigation. Something. Yeah, I just I I am not I it was it was a big enough piece of change. That I it, that jumped out. Um, okay, that was that was my one question. So on, um, we're going to have several executive sessions, and what I would suggest is that we do a potential contract matter yep. that would involve Eric, and do that first. Because then we can do the others and air when we need it for us. You can take off when we open at this point. We're good. Perfect. Thank you for making it, Brian. Hey, Brian, thank you. Good. No problem. Have a good night. Brian is, good just so you all know, Brian and his team are doing a great job. I know they're short staffed and we're working on that, but you know, thank goodness we've got 
his historic knowledge and the guys we got out there keeping the lights on and but they're they're all good people. Your four testimony going on. Okay. It is 517, and I would like to move that we go into executive session to discuss a potential contract issue with premature disclosure, which would prejudice the interests of part. Second. Okay, so now we have to get the items. It is 6.04 p.m. and we are out of executive session. No action was taken. Okay. And I would like to move that we go into executive session uh, to deal with uh, discuss an employee matter. Um, it matters. Matters. Employee matters. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second. And okay, it is 632, and we are out of executive session. No action was taken. Is there? I make a motion that uh, we institute a rehire bonus for existing employees who through this transition period, remain in their current position until December 31st of this year. The amount would be $1,000 each, payable on second. Any discussion? Okay, executive session is adjourned. Thank you. I would just say that we should make it clear that this is a way of thanking employees for staying with us through transition. I motion carries. You tell me now. Thank you so much. That'd be fun. Yes, thank yeah. you. I don't like that. Yep. Okay. Um. What was? <laughs> what was this one? Um. It was. I just had it up. Oh my god. Are we Yep. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll do the motion again. I move that we go into executive session in order to discuss a litigation matter, the premature disclosure of which will prejudice the interests of our collective department. It is, is there a second? Second. Um, it is 6.35 and we are in executive session. It is 6.50 and we are out of executive session. No action was taken. Um, I would like to move that we go into executive session to discuss uh, some confidential customer matters. Second. And I'm going to use you get help. Oh. Yeah, we need to get both. All right. It is it is 10 after 7. We are out of executive session and no action was taken. I just have a hit the button. Um, is there a motion? Make a motion. We end the meeting. We are adjourned at 7. Really? Oh,